Yo, so with the Fate Remnant collab going on with the release of all these new characters, I wanted to dive into a little bit about the story, mainly focusing on Iori. I ended up having to watch a playthrough because of my arm. It is what it is. I've been waiting all this time. I can't wait any longer. Been one to get into the story since the game came out. Overall, narrative wise, it's solid. I like the direction they took, the people that they decided to use, and the way that they decided to close things out all together. I will say that I wish that from what I've seen there was more involvement of some characters like Tamamo and Samson for instance but I understand that they had to keep the main focus and honestly I think that they did that just because they plan to roll that out in the DLC anyway that's usually the stick these days they have the full game and then they chop it up and they sell the rest of it as DLC nothing really new there Zoyu really surprised me I liked him a lot more than I thought I would Hiata which is is the caster that was bringing the waxing moon ritual together i liked him a lot more than i thought i would and of course everybody's favorite raiko everybody was anticipating for her to be the writer and it turns out that that was nail on the head and she did not disappoint it was really more so of a carryover from all the things that had been built up in fgo i didn't think they were going to push it that far so i'm glad we got more of that it actually makes her background feel a lot more complete i love the way that they did the story with this art panels that's pretty standard for a game of this format but i often don't play this type of genre so for me it's really refreshing to see it told in that way especially when there's a lot being said without actually saying it it seemed a lot more powerful without being unnecessarily verbose which as you guys know is kind of irregular for a fate right that's one of the main things is that there's too much being said but what remnant there's only so much being said and they kind of leave you to decipher the rest even the endings a lot of that is left to be open-ended they don't just say hey this is what it is they let you decide what it is so i really love that aspect to it and of course one of the people that really surprised me here is Iori. Iori, Iori, Iori. Or should I say, I'm not surprised. I mean, I already mentioned, and many people said this before the game even came out, that this guy shows a lot of promise. Just from the way that they represented his character initially, it came off as his story would be one worth talking about. And it was, no doubt. I feel like him and Yamato bounce off each other perfectly. And I really feel like he's one of the best protagonists that we have so far. Just what what they gave us with remnant it was really well done when i first started to uncover his background and i saw what happened to his village and how he ended up getting to the point where he is in the story i was thinking okay classic tragic my entire background got wiped that's pretty normal it's all about what you do with it and the more i got into his story and i know i shouldn't be doing this i couldn't help but compare him to the other protagonists and i know it can't just be me because the more you go through it you see a a lot of striking similarities to people that came before him and so i'm looking at the way that he came about okay he's kind of like shiro sort of what with the idea that he's so narrowly focused and seems to have his moral compass intact and then you get more into his actual upbringing and you realize how isolated he was from everybody else unless it was something that regarded his craft again very shiro-ish until you get to the point where you realize how fiendishly absorbed by it he is and how it somewhat made him inhuman in a way because in order to reach this level you got to give up something right and you can see the way that he operated just from the preview that played a large part of it and also how he wants to be like the person that saved him and you can get this out of shiro too but the ideal isn't as destructive until he actually turns into archer so from that point of view it's like okay now it's kind of given kiritsugu but he's not going as far to save everybody he's not going as far to extend outside of the place where he's at all of this is primarily focused on him and what he's doing the waxing moon ritual just happens to be in the way and then you round things up and you get into the ending of his character and a lot of that is foreshadowed beforehand you know with conversations that he had like the one where he was talking to you and she's trying to hype him up and he flat out tells her i don't know what you think this is but i am not a selfless man and it comes off very strange it's like huh 
What do you mean by that? Even she didn't believe it. But the ending for his character puts it in real bold letters. True ending, normal ending, bad ending. And all the endings were great, by the way. This is supposedly the bad ending. Really, however you want to interpret it. But what ends up happening, Iori confesses that he gives up his humanity for the sword. He gave up being human just to better himself with the blade. Halfway through the story, it tells us that he actually meets Sasuke Kojiro while he was still alive and got trained by him. So Iori, not only being a disciple of Musashi in the story, the OG Musashi, he's trained with the female Musashi, but he also learned from Sasuke too. So he's kind of merged two of the best swordsmen to ever exist on top of everything that he already knows from all the fights that he's going through now, which is terrifying. And that just goes back into him being one of those best protagonist it stands to be so impressive that he was able to do all of this on his own merits and when you see him fighting against people like Raiko at the beginning of the story he's not the one at the disadvantage it may seem like it but he's really the one that everybody should be afraid of because in this ending this ending that revolves around him where he finally gets what he desires he ends up taking the vessel and you know it's the classic the servant is supposed to destroy the vessel and end the war and that way nothing else will come about from it well before he does this iori asked yamato what would you do if i said i didn't want to end it and you can see yamato kind of like cut his eyes in the back like they were very precise about this from the expressions that everybody gives especially these two to the timing and iori tries to play it off like oh this is a joke and then he finally takes the vessel puts it in the grimoire yamato wants to destroy it and he's like no no i don't think i'm gonna let you do that it's like whoa 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 is this iori's body is he confessing to villainhood there's no way they did this with his character it's so good it's so so good and going back into those similarities who iori ends up reminding me of is kirei and all the things that he ended up going through to end up where he was at the end of the story and that's not to say that it isn't a combination because it definitely is you definitely feel that lack of compassion in the same way and he ends up having a showdown with yamato he ends up having a showdown down with his own servant by the end of the story which if i'm not mistaken we've never done we've never had a protagonist have a flat out one-on-one -on -one showdown with their own servant and that protagonist ended up being accused of villainhood it was a very interesting take with his character and that's why it's so exciting that he's been brought into fgo along with the others because realistically what yori wanted and the reason why he kept the vessel is that he was gonna cause chaos and keep bringing more warriors to go against the best of the best and try to take them all down with the skill alone so for him being at caldea you're definitely gonna get what you're looking for i promise you you gonna meet your match in that motherfucker but even with the ending i love the position that yamato took with his background especially considering how it's conveyed that he's also taking a lot of lives so something like this isn't anything new to him he also says that he's not sympathetic to iori's position but at the same time you can tell that he he empathizes with the situation because Yamato ends up being the one that takes Iori down. He was the one person that Iori couldn't get the upper hand on because of that lack of emotion, which is something that neither Musashi or Sasuke abided by. They did what they had to do and they came from a time where there was a lot of slaughter and a lot of people going at it. But as nomadic as they may come off, they never gave up humanity in its entirety. And Iori did. He outright admits it is the reason that I took everybody down up until this point and will continue to do so he even beat the female musashi he literally got that good once he learned sasuke's moves it pretty much exploited her weakness and i thought even that was funny because he had trained with female musashi too and she was like you two-time ambassador <laughs> used her own techniques coupled with Sasuke's against her. So he has a brand new form of Tsubame Geishi that nobody else has because he's an amalgam of all these different arts. But it feels good though. The story, I mean, it feels good. I know a lot of people felt a certain type of way. I'm already saying they don't like it. They want the goody two shoes. Everybody ends up happy ending. But this is by far my favorite ending. And they're all really good. That's not just because of the way the ending was. It just really hit 
hits hard when you consider the journey that they went through only to come to that conclusion anyway like there was no deviating in his path and you find this with the other endings and this is where the kirei element comes in it comes off that oh he could have just lived a normal life because he always cared about his sister he really did at least from a logical standpoint as he was supposed to very similar to how kirei cared for his family his daughter especially from a logical standpoint but that logic only goes so far and the story itself admits this when the ending comes up and it's not the one that he desired where he gets taken down by yamato his blade is still not sated so no matter what happens it still plays into that hand of his sword still thirst for more and it may seem like it's a good ending at face value but the moment that the opportunity presents itself again he'll do exactly what he did in this story which further perpetuates something that he says out of his own mouth that he's just a sword wielding demon born in the wrong era where peace was openly presented to him at the end of the story he literally denied that peace and says that he wants more conflict just to get better with his blade a lot like how kirei didn't have to do any of the things that he did he could have perfectly went his own way and played pretend and blended in with society but he never would have been satisfied that way but i do think iori plays the veil a lot better and i think that's only because you can tell that's what they tried to do they never necessarily tried to play the veil with kirei only with the people that he interacted with and they quickly found out that he's not exactly what he may seem and i love the part where yamato ends up laying down next to iori that kind of symbolizes that even though he was the one to take him down he did have a friend in him up until that point and that's something that was never really presented to him until his wake until his final moments now from my perspective and this is just saying if i was in iori's shoes that would feel a little unsettling to know that there was another choice at the very last minute but by that point in time it was too late to do anything about it but what i feel has nothing to do with it you can tell that even though yamato may have been his only true friend and there could have been more to the world than just him and his blade he was completely satisfied with that again a lot like kire he went out smiling and I feel like it really sheds a light on one of the biggest issues that we have is the deification of people. People deify humans way too often. And this is a perfect example of that. The man flat out said, I didn't say I was a hero. Y'all said that. I just went with it. And it also leads back into Chiemon's criticisms on how Iori is always wearing a mask, which is right to a degree, but it makes them feel kind of misplaced because that isn't always true. They're there is a lot of transparency with his character maybe not as transparent as him but iori could have easily not told yamato about his wishes waited for him to disappear and continue his pursuit that way and of course yamato would have had his suspicions because he can read into things like that but he never would have known for certain it was iori himself that decided that the first step would be to let it all go let it out in the open bro they're already making memes saying that iori is basically goku because <laughs> when you think about it he really is goku is the same person that would sacrifice the world just for a better fight they are not lying then you have kaya coming in at the last minute having to reap the consequences of her brother's actions that becomes doubly jarring when from her perspective it appears as if iori wasn't in the wrong when he really was and she'll never know that because she was kidnapped at the time it's good and this is really just surface level that is not at all what i was expecting it to be again as far as the other endings i feel like a lot of characters deserve a video on their own because people like chiemon still can't help but feel like there's more to uncover especially with the way that things went about with him as far as the hiata ending they decided to bring out a deity that most people probably don't know about when somebody uses a big bad deity as the foundation everybody usually knows who that is with this one it was a lot different and the same thing can be said about chie mong and what he ended up turning into very left field all of the endings were very left field in their own way and that's why you know i say it goes to show there's a lot that can be done with this series people try to box it in and make it this and make it that that was a great game story-wise at least i'm sure other people can speak more to how it was played it looks tedious at times but that also seems to be the thing that makes it so enjoyable but the story itself is heat 